I'm John Moran, a founding member and director of Ghent Glass. Ghent Glass was heavily inspired by the American Studio Glass movement, basing its mission on knowledge sharing and community building as the fundamentals of the organization. The staff members of Ghent Glass work together weekly in a free live glass demonstration offered to the public. Each week, one of us heads the team as we all work together towards a common goal. Hey, my name is Maurice Leroy. Um, I've been blowing glass for about eight years now. Uh, I started blowing glass in Amsterdam at my father's studio, and I started working at Gint Glass since 2015. I'm currently working there as a studio coordinator. My work is mainly figurative. I mostly work sculptural, uh, often incorporating things such as death and the way we look at life or uh, the loss thereof. Uh, hello, my name is Marta Dedziak. Uh, I'm from Poland, uh, Bielsko-Biała. I first time uh, start working with glass uh, in Poland on an Academy of Fine Arts uh, in Wrocław. I came to Ghent Glass uh, in February 2018 for internship and stayed ever since. Hello, I'm Avo. At a young age, I started collecting glass because I was fascinated by the glass blowing technique. I discovered Gant Glass three years ago, I did a few workshops and I absolutely loved it. I've been an apprentice and staff member of the studio the last two years. Hey, I'm Blue Van Eekhout, the latest apprentice of Gant Glass. It's circa 10 months now that I'm working here where I'm super grateful for. Last year I received my master degree from the ceramics and glass department from Lucas School of Arts here in Ghent. Within my work I search for a balance between porcelain and glass. References of architecture and design are often present. Hi, I'm Nico Dalemans. Always been fascinating by glass, fire and craftsmanship. So I started glass, working with glass six years ago and I'm being part of the Ghent class team since two years. Those guys, they rock. Hi, I'm Walter de Bok and I live in Ghent. I discovered Ghent Glass at the Light Festival in my hometown about five years ago. As soon as the studio opened its doors to the public, I spent hours each week watching and analyzing the hot glass demos. It didn't take long before I was invited to try and make something with hot glass myself. Today I'm a full member of the Friday Night Live team and one of five board members. Hi everyone, my name is Frank van Dalen. I began to work with glass in 1991 at the Institute for Arts and Crafts in Mechelen, Belgium. I was among the very first foreign students to take classes at the Novi Borg Glass School. I have been with Gang Glass from the very beginning and hope to continue making work with these guys for many more years. Hope to meet you all someday. Hi there, my name is Frederick Rombach. I am a member of the Friday Night Live demo team. I have my own studio in Antwerp, Hoboken, and I've been working with the Ghent Glass team for the past five years, doing demos every Friday night. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Uh, one thing that's important uh, when working with a team, it's not always evident, is communication and the planning. Uh, to be clear, that doesn't mean that planning has to be solid when you begin. When the team is used to working together, they should be able to anticipate each other's moves and figure out where they need to fit into their roles in the process and during the piece. That being said, communication is still important to make sure that uh, everybody knows what's going on at a time and that you're talking to each other and everyone is kind of paying attention on the piece. It's important that the communication is direct and to make sure that you understand each other. In our studio, for instance, there are several different languages at play, so we try to make sure that each of us understand what's happening. We were lucky that we work together really every week, so we all kind of know each other's working methods and we're able to hand off the different jobs to certain people at different times. What you'll see here is us making a torso for a piece that we know is going to last for another several hours. So it's also the beginning of a process that will probably take around four or five hours. So both Maurice and I are getting ready for the, the rest of the piece and mainly carrying it. The other body parts were made ahead of time and are being stored now in an oven which is holding at 
uh, 550 degrees Celsius, so around 950 or 1000 Fahrenheit. And we'll kick it up to um, 600 degrees or 1100 degrees Fahrenheit before we pick up the pieces and assemble them. So each week we come together to work as a team with one artist heading the way. During these live demonstrations, we often have a large audience viewing the pieces as they're being made and being attentive throughout the entire process as we explain parts to them periodically throughout the entire evening. Often in certain moments, the pieces, they, they, especially this piece, tended to have a lot of color application. And it kind of becomes like a wear on your arms, just rolling into powder often. So I'm able to switch out with um, here, Maurice, one of the team members, and have him take flashes, but also rolling in the color. So he knows the methods that I'm using and what I'm searching for in this uh, piece and in this specific process of this piece so that I get exactly what I'm looking for. So I specifically roll in the color for these because I want the, the gradation, like I don't want a perfect um, covering and therefore like powdering is not the best method. So rolling is the method that I choose. And this piece has about 17 layers of color on it. So going through that process it tends to kind of throw the bubble off. And what's important now is that I blow the bubble up beyond um, the initial shape and then shrink it back down so I can gather on it. This allows the bubble to blow out evenly and then thicken back up. If I don't blow it out evenly here, I end up with a very thick bottom and it's not very easy from that point, uh, from the gather point on to get it back to that shape. So it's much easier in this phase to really blow it, over blow it, and then heat it and shrink it all back up. And it's important in this part that the, the other team members know what's happening. So they're aware that uh, I'm, I'm trying to overheat it a certain way or we're trying to heat, get a certain heat in it so that we can do this. So I'm heating certain areas or they're heating certain areas in order to get it to the right consistency for uh, blowing the, the bubble up. So once I've blown the bubble pretty thin, I'll heat it back up and take it to the marver just to shape it up and really thicken it back up for the next gather. Without doing this, it, it tends to be too thin and it's really hard to control on the gather. So this just gives it a little bit more stability and gives me a thicker place to start from. And as I said, communication is important. So here, Maurice and I will just discuss what's the next step after the gather. Like, will he take it from me? And what will happen once uh, once I come out of the furnace or when I'm heating? So we can just see where the next person will step in. So to get the really fleshy appearance with the glass, I put a lot of layers of color on first. Uh, there's 17 layers of color on, and then I take a really thin strip gather, and then add some more color on top of that strip gather. Once I have that very thin layer, I think there's three or four more colors or uh, layers of color on there, which gives it quite the fleshy translucency. So when I take the strip gather, I really try to peel all the clear glass off. So I go immediately to the marver, peel it off, and then peel it off again with the jacks. So I have a very ultra thin layer of clear there.
so when working with a team, the crucial moments are almost always the the points where you transfer from one thing to another. So you can see here, like Maurice and I were talking, and it's a very seamless transition between him taking the pipe and me having the pipe. And that's one of the really great things about having worked together for so long. We end up kind of anticipating each other's movements. And you see that like each team person in this in this um, video or in this demonstration, each person is kind of finding a place where they need to be or where they're looking to be and taking on that role. And that goes from every step from carrying the piece or flashing the piece to torching, to paddling, to shielding. Every person is important. It's not that just because you're not the person taking the piece or flashing that you're less important than the one who is. So the piece right now is also not incredibly heavy. It's relatively thick for what we're, the size it is because we're gonna add these solid and larger blown components to it. But you see here that the way we're working together, um, Frank here is helping Maurice by capping the pipe and helping turn when necessary. If you see here when Maurice is flipping this piece, he's not using his wrists, he's really using his shoulders and his forearms and throwing his weight into it in order to flip the pipe. That just allows for him to not have problems later on and have sore hands at the end of the day. Getting used to these movements gives a big hand when you're working on larger or heavier pieces. The piece that we're working on, again, is not so uh, large, but it is pretty heavy because of the, the, the weight that comes onto it. So with these pieces, uh, the majority of the, the sculpting I did before, uh, so I made the, the components earlier, like in the weeks prior, and put those together so this would be just the assembly. And that's one of the things with these pieces, I have some work to do here so it doesn't require so much of the team, but in order for this to actually work, uh, people have to be involved enough to know when they're going to need to step in. And that's a typical part of working together on these, these pieces is that sometimes you won't be very active until a point when the assembly begins. So people step in and take over the doors, they bring bits, they help each other out. But at the same time, even though there's a quite a social part of this, it's also uh, paying attention to what's happening to make sure that you don't hit a point where we need somebody and they're not there because they were not paying attention at that moment. And I think that's one of the things that's become the most evident when we're working together is that you're always actively participating even if you're not actively participating. You're always one of the people ready to step in when it's needed and necessary. This punty may seem oversized and gigantic for the size of this piece, but as you'll see, as we start assembling, you have to be prepared for the, the next step. And we have definitely made the mistake in the past by making too small of a punty for a piece that seemed like it was the right size. And then as you add parts, it becomes heavier and much harder to turn. So even though we're always adapting, having some basic plan is very helpful in order to make sure that you don't make a mistake, like making too small of a punty or not having enough manpower there when you need it. As patience is not necessarily a virtue of mine, here you can see me cooling the punty with my superpower.
So as I said, it's not always apparent uh, the, the help we have from the team. But if you look or you see whenever we go to the glory hole, it's cut out of a lot of the video, but that the doors are being opened immediately. The communication is happening there. The person is paying attention. Uh, at points, the punty is being torched or, or uh, heated from one of the other assistants. And that's just the communication happening and people stepping in when they see that it's necessary. When we're working as a team like this, you have to let go of ego. You of course have the person who's in charge, who's the gaffer, who's leading the piece and helping control everything, but the person who's assisting are also working with the others to make sure that they have, uh, they know what they're supposed to do at different times. Each piece is equally as important, whether you're torching or opening doors or shielding, each person is equally as valuable as the person turning the pipe. So here we're going to start attaching the first part. As I said before, the oven is brought up to 600 degrees Celsius, which is about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, before I put the piece on. It's been soaking there for quite some time, and has been holding already uh, for several hours at 550 or uh, 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as we attach it, we try to go immediately for a flash, uh, and then you don't see it here in this thing, but we go directly for fluffy torch to make sure we even out the temperature. And I pretty quickly torch those fingers to make sure that everything is uh, secure temperature wise and is not going to pop off. And throughout this process, uh, Maurice is kind of directing the torching from the other people, but also we're, I'm working with him to make sure that he fits in and out of the glory hole well. So if I need to position something so he can go easily in and out. I'm repositioning it for him as well as for the finished product of the piece because I can make a lot of these last minute adjustments at the end if it doesn't fit easily into the glory hole. One thing that's important to this entire process and assembly is trying to get a seamless transition. So one thing I really do here is, is melt that transition really heavily and then shape it immediately without a flash in between. Therefore, I'm really blending the surfaces rather than heating the core. So as I said here, I'm going back in and really melting in the surface to shape it and really smooth out that transition. Maurice is again helping to direct it. One of the other team members is watching the body parts to make sure that the hands stay warm and the whole uh, piece stays of a, a good temperature, whether it's the punty or the fingertips.
and it may seem like we're going back over and over again to the same parts, but uh, what's happening here is it's just a, really to get that surface really melted in and to really transition smoothly, you have to build up the heat, uh, both inside and then really on the surface in order to make sure it blends well. So this usually takes me several heats uh, to finish that entire process. And with like all of these these uh, areas, it's not that you're only hitting one side of the, the connection point. So I'm also doing the front and the back, and in between making sure we're stabilizing the movement so the arm's not swinging around on Maurice while he's flashing, but so that I can work uh, controlled in the stages for the heats. Once we have the, the seam melted in and the arm in position, we go back and then try to transition that seam with, by layering it with some powder. So here I'm taking the head from the oven. Again, it's been holding at 550 degrees, and then we bumped it up to 600, uh, which is again 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. So that when I stick it, it it doesn't have the risk of cracking. Pretty immediately, once we put it the piece on, we give it a quick torch and go for a flash. Uh, Maurice takes a relatively long flash uh, just to make sure it's evened out, and then gives it just a little extra right on the tip of the head. I prefer to use the gloves because I find that I have more control when I'm assembling the piece and I'm able to kind of use my hands like I would if I was sculpting with another material and position the piece where I want. But if you see during this whole process, like Marta is there very ready with a torch um, and watching for uh, the temperature of the whole piece. So she's very ready and very prepared for whichever step may come next, uh, which you see it's for all parts of the, the piece being assembled. It's not necessarily evident in the video, but we take several flashes there and torches in between to make sure the temperature is very evened out on the head and the whole piece before we start the sculpting process. We'll spend a lot of time kind of melting in every seam. Uh, it's not all here in the video, but really melting in those seams to make sure that it's a very smooth transition. It's really important that the whole thing is pretty even when you do that and you don't have a lot of movement, but that it's all relatively stable. So you can see there's almost constantly a torch running on that hand just to keep the fingers from breaking because they're quite fragile and just cooling quickly. We also go back and forth between the punty and the fingers, but it's important for the other team members to really be watching those temperature because in this scenario, I'm not able to see those things. I'm really focused on the details and Maurice and Marta, uh, Maurice especially too, is really watching the heats and kind of instructing the other team members where to focus so that he doesn't lose too much temperature on the body parts for flashing, but it's also not moving too much on the punty. And on almost every flash, Maurice is really uh, communicating with the people on the doors so they know when he's coming over, uh, when he's coming out, about how long his heat will need to be, uh, which doors need to be open, which ones need to be closed. Um, it's really just kind of constantly talking to each other, but. It, 
as I said in the past, we do work together a lot. So it's quite nice that we all know each other's methods and how we go through the processes together. As we do have like a lot of different languages in the studio, we try to communicate as clearly as possible and usually often also as simply as possible. Um, so sometimes the, the communication is very direct um, and maybe loud to get over the, the, the noise of the studio, but it's really just to be able to make sure that we're understood in the, in the, in the process. So you see here throughout this like entire part what I'm doing is I'm torching the surface of the glass and really melting just one segment at a time almost um, that it becomes seamless before I even touch it with the tool I'm really getting it like liquidy hot and Marisa is turning in a way that the the glass is flowing um, back and forth in the same movement that I'm melting it Once we have that seam melted in, we add a little bit of extra powder on top just to kind of help transition it. Uh, it's really important to make sure that that, um, that powder is on top of the seam and then you melt it back in so it's the same kind of consistency as the rest of the color on the piece and uh, that seam line becomes invisible between the different parts being assembled. And this process is repetitive because each part, like each section, I can't do the whole thing at once. I'm doing each section of the neck, first one side, then the other side. And if you try to go too quickly, the head's moving around too much and you actually can't get enough um, like pressure in there to do anything. So you really have to heat and then let it cool down and then work on another part. So you don't have too much movement in it and everything is, is working consistently. So again, it's really important that we kind of even out the temperatures. So what we're doing here pretty much the whole time is just getting all the, the parts back to like the, the consistent temperature. So while we're maybe torching one spot or heating one spot, we're cooling another by waiting on it. And uh, pretty much every time we touch any, any part of the piece, I had to, to adjust a finger there. The tools have to be very hot. Otherwise the fingers can be cold and you can cause breakage. With almost every little tweak, it's uh, only a minor adjustment at this point. I'm not trying to make big uh, sweeping motions or any big uh, changes, just trying to make sure that it looks uh, subtle and in the right place. So I sequenced this piece specifically this way that we would put the first arm on, uh, get that in the right place, then put the head on, and then put the second arm on. The reason for that is to make sure that it's secure on the punty and on the pipe when we're working. The piece is the most secure this way, uh, the head being on before the second arm. Make sure that it's going to be easy uh, in the glory hole for flashing and that the fingers are not moving around too much on the hands. But it also makes sure that the piece is stable as we add more parts and keep working on it and putting pressure on each individual component.
So here you see a lot of repetition that we're melting those seams in over and over and back. And once I get the surface hot, I will go back in and sculpt that area. But you see that the, the other team members are torching the punty and continue to torch the fingertips to make sure everything stays in the right position and is not too cold. So at this point in the evening, we're starting to finish up the piece. Typically this is around between 12 o'clock and one o'clock in the morning, as we're still completely absorbed on the piece and focused on the process. Much like the audience who still tends to be there watching at this point. Every Friday we open our doors at eight o'clock in the evening and people are able to have a drink in our cafe while they watch the glass making process until one in the morning. Once we've got to a point that the piece seems finished, uh, I take some time to look at it. And while I'm really looking over the whole thing to make sure there's no details that I'm missing, we're also making sure that the piece is evening out temperature wise. When you're working with solid and blown components, it's important that it eventually becomes pretty equal in temperature. Uh, you don't want to get the whole thing moving and then let it cool down evenly, but you want it to even out as you're going with it. So here especially you see that we're evening out the temperature, we're torching the punty so it has some movement, we're keeping the fingertips hot because they're the most fragile part points of the whole piece, and then we're also every once in a while taking a little extra flash on the head to make sure it has a little bit more temperature. Once there's a little bit of movement in the punty, we start to take it off. As it goes with all of these pieces, this is where the whole team becomes quite important. We're all really watching and talking to each other because this is the stage where the piece is moving around the most on the punty. It's the hardest to control and everybody has to be ready uh, for the drop, for the knockoff to put the piece away. At this point, Maurice is really the person who's in charge of the heat uh, to make sure that he feels the most confident since he's the one taking all the flashes and making sure that he feels comfortable in the way that the piece is moving. 